Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to spool knit. It's also known as French knitting, and it uses this little jig right here. It's a wooden cylinder with just a couple cotter pin pegs on the top. It's used to make things like a thicker rope or decorative edges on macrame. Often you do it with yarn. Today we're gonna to be doing it with paracord. So I've got 10 feet of paracord here with me. Um, it just depends on how long you want your project to be in the end. Calculating it out, about one foot of paracord turns into one inch of weave, kind of like a Cobra or Solomon bar bracelet, um, but you'll want to leave some extra if you're wanting your finished cord to be a certain length. Um, and then I also have this knotter's tool. Um, this is the one that comes with three fids in it on our website, but any marlin spike or fid that you have laying around is going to do just fine. Let's dive in. All right, to get this started, we'll just find one end of our cord. The nice thing about this is that you can just make it in one end, so you can leave it on your spool as you're going if you don't know how much cord you need. So we're just gonna stick the end down through the middle, and then we'll just grab it with a couple fingers down below. Then we're gonna start wrapping it around a peg clockwise, but we're gonna be moving around our, our spool here counterclockwise. So I'm just using three pegs. This one's set up for up to six, and the other side has up to eight. We've got a couple different sizes of these. This is our large one. So we're gonna be wrapping it around clockwise, onto the next peg, clockwise, onto the next peg, clockwise. We wanna keep this cord so that we don't lose pressure and it comes off the pegs like that. So that's once around. We're gonna do twice around before we go on to the second step. So once more, around each of the three pegs. And then we're gonna hold that. Keep holding your bottom end too. Once you get the first knot, that's not gonna matter quite as much. Our cord's coming off of this peg right here. So we're gonna start to the one next around going counterclockwise. So I'm just gonna grab that bottom loop. So I've got the two loops on there. I'm gonna grab the bottom one pull out some slack and bring that over the peg so that it's no longer on that peg. We'll move on to the next one and do the same thing with our knotter's tool or fid, grabbing that bottom loop and pulling it over the top loop and off of the peg. Last one, same thing, grab the bottom loop and here's where we're gonna have to hold on to our, our slack and pull it over that loop and off the peg. Now we're gonna pull our tail end coming out the bottom to just kind of pull up that slack so everything stays in place. And that's really all there is to it. I'll show you how to finish it off when we're done. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you a trick to kind of help keep things in place as you're making it. So as you're knitting, it can be a little bit hard to hold on to both your starting end of the cord and your working end. So what I like to do um, on this particular spool, if you get some other ones, you won't have the, the double sided, but because I've got holes on the bottom, I'm gonna find this peg, the one that I end each round on. So I start here, go around, and each time I stop here, just offset from that a little bit, I'm gonna add one of them on the bottom. So then if I find my the other end of my cord, this only works if you're using a, a pre-cut length. It won't work if you're taking it right off of a spool or a large length. But find your end and put it right through the end of that cotter pin. And that's just gonna hold our cord in place when we're pulling our loops off so we don't have to hold onto that end. And this end's gonna kinda take care of itself now. You'll just, after each round, pull it down a little bit farther. Let's keep going. So now I'm gonna go around that one more time just to, in case you didn't catch it the first time. Take the slack out of that cord now as we're wrapping. First peg, second peg, third peg, all in that same direction. And then I'll pull up my slack, so that's not gonna go any place now. As I start one around going counterclockwise and pull that bottom loop away and over the top. Next one, same thing, bottom loop over the top one. And that last one, bottom loop over the top. 
grabbing that bottom cord now, we'll just kind of take up the slack and keep going. This is gonna feel really slow at first, um, but as you get going, you'll speed up a lot. Um, by the time I was done with my first one, I had, it had taken me about half as long by the end as it was at the beginning. So if you get frustrated, just keep at it and it's gonna speed up. All right, so I've got a little bit of uh, length here now, maybe three inches, it's starting to come out of the bottom of my spool. Um, so I'll show you how to finish it off. It's gonna be pretty much just like you did. Um, and if you're familiar with knitting, you probably already know what we're gonna do. I'm not a knitter, so. All right, so continuing around just like normal, we're gonna move on to the next peg there and just wrap it around once and then pull our loop over. And now we're actually going to just take the end out of that loop. So you'd have to cut your cord at this point. So now instead of a, a loop going through, like on this one, we've just got a single cord going through. So we'll just keep going around. You can pull that down. Um, yep, clockwise around the loop there, around the peg. Pull your bottom one over, keep the tension on there. bottom one over, and then you can just pull the one end through. All right, one last time. Clockwise, hold your tension, pull that loop over, and then we can just pull this end up. All right, there's what it looks like when it's all done. This one is kind of triangular, if you look at it on the end, because we've got our three They'll end up more round if you use more pegs, um, but you'll also end up using more cord and it'll be wider as well. Um, this can easily be turned into a keychain. If you've got a split key ring, just cut your end off, melt it so that doesn't pull through your knot, and then put a split ring on the end. The other nice thing about this is that it is quick release. So it's basically like crochet, where if you take out the last stitch, the whole thing is gonna come undone. So if we take the cord out of our last three loops, Now we can just pull the end and it all come undone. You'll have a couple twists in there, but it'll probably be a lot less kinked than if you did it in a cobra bracelet or salmon bar. So that is spool knitting. So I have not tried this yet, but you can use the same method that we used for this little keychain fob or whatever it is um, with a larger loom um, to make like a, a hat. So if you'd like to see us make a paracord stocking cap or even a yarn one, let us know in the comments and we'll definitely cover that in a future video. All the supplies that we used in this video, you can find in our store. So that includes the knotting spool, the loom, um, the knotter's tool or other fids as well, and oodles and oodles of paracord. Hope you guys liked this one. If you didn't, leave us a like and subscribe. We put out videos twice a week. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.